Good morning. This is the Keeping It Real Sunday School class from Cornerstone Baptist Church in Richland, Missouri. I'm Dr. Max Thornsbury and I am the teacher. My wife Brenda will be reading the scriptures today and we are continuing our study in the short letter of 1 John. You remember as we've been going through these letters, John wrote this in his old age. About A.D. 93, he would have been 77 if he was 17 when Jesus uh, was crucified. And that would make him in his late 70s, early 80s, just prior to being um, put on the island of Patmos, put in exile by the emperor Domitian. Uh, he may have written this letter from Patmos, but my professor at the University of Missouri said he didn't. He wrote it before he was put on the Isle of Patmos, but he definitely wrote it before he had his great vision and eventually wrote the letter of Revelation. This is a letter to the churches in Middle Asia addressing the Gnostic heresy that had permeated the church. We've been over that in all our previous lessons. I'll not rehash that. But remember that the Gnostics worshipped knowledge, and they were Greek Christians that had fallen back into heresy, saying that Jesus could not have occupied a human body, that he did not come in the flesh, that he, the Spirit of Jesus came on the man Jesus when he was baptized by John the Baptist, and it left the man Jesus while he was on the cross before he died. They did not believe in the incarnation of our Lord and Savior. I remember Remember, we talked about the Latin Greek derivative of that word. Carne means meat or flesh. Christ was 100% man and 100% God and he set the right hand throat of God today. 100% man, sinless in every respect, and 100% God. So with that, let's get started. We're going to start in 1 John chapter 3 and Brenda's going to read verse 18 through 22. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. This is a book of assurances, and the Apostle John has said we can be assured of our salvation because if we are truly saved, we'll be doing two things. We'll be keeping the commandments of Jesus and we'll be loving our fellow man. And there are some questions the uh, lesson writer asked at the end of this lesson, which I'll address. And in reality, John is telling these people they are Christians. Uh, he uses some very interesting words here. He says, if your heart condemn us, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. What in the world do you think he means by that, Brenda? Well, um, hmm, I'm, I'm thinking, first thing that popped in my mind is people are always saying, follow your heart. Yeah. Well, your heart is, is not always right. That is correct. I can't and tell so, you how many people I've counseled over the year, Brenda, as yeah. a deacon, that said, I know it's wrong, but it just feels so right. Yeah. This is an evidence by the Apostle John that our salvation is not based on feelings. It's based on documented facts. Sometimes our heart will lead us astray, will it not? Most mm -hmm. of the time, it's when we're involved in some sort of rebellious sin. And most of the time that I've dealt with it in people's lives is when they've been involved in adultery. Um, that's a very serious sin. It carried uh, the weight of capital punishment in the Old Testament. And people get involved in these things and they start having a relation with some relationship with somebody who's not their spouse. And the next thing you know, they're making excuses about how it feels so good, it feels so right, it can't be wrong. Sounds like a country song. You know, I might have to write me one. Maybe I can make a little extra money, you think? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> uh, and done. he's saying that our heart sometimes condemns us, but we have the facts in black and white, do we not? Mm -hmm. We're going to look in these next few verses about two words that he uses. One of them is believe and love. Now, belief implies something that's happened in the past in this Greek tense that we find it in this letter. I believed when I was five or six years old. You believed when you were five or six years old. Um, 
at some point in time, a man and a woman must make a belief in Christ a fact, right? Mm -hmm. What's the Apostle Paul says? You confess with your mouth and believe mm -hmm. in your heart, and thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. um, the simplicity of the gospel that he talks about when he writes the book of, Col of Colossians, he said, Know ye not that you are complete in the Lord Jesus Christ? We're going to read some verses out of Galatians that basically say the same thing here this morning. So the whole purpose of this is an assurance. Our heart may condemn us. We may have doubts. But if we made a confession of faith at some point in our life, even if we were to get involved in sin, even if we were to get involved in things that would lead us astray, and it happened a lot, this, even this early in the church, we'll see how the Apostle Paul addresses it in both 2 Corinthians and Galatians here in a minute. Uh, we have an assurance, right? Mm -hmm. That yes. assurance is built up by the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ said, by their fruits you shall know them. If there aren't any fruits in someone's life, if there isn't any love for the fellow man or the body of Christ or assembling with the body of Christ, then maybe you should doubt your salvation. Mm -hmm. But if you are following Christ's commandments, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind, and love your brother as yourself, better than yourself, the Apostle Paul says, right? Mm -hmm. Esteem others greater, higher than yourself, he tells us in Philippians. Um, then you have no reason to doubt. There's no reason to doubt. Sin does not cause you to lose your salvation. Sin causes you to lose your relationship and mm -hmm. your intimacy. You know, when you slap me or kick me or throw frozen <laughs> food at me, the intimacy of our relationship suffers, right? Until you apologize and we get back square again. That's like the Holy Spirit. What's its purpose, Brenda? The Holy Spirit is to convict of sin and point to righteousness in Jesus Christ, right. to put us right back on the path again. That is correct. It's not sin that causes us to lose our salvation. It's lack of belief that causes a lack of salvation. You cannot lose your salvation is what the Apostle John is telling these people. And he's going to tell it more emphatically as he gets into chapter 5. Salvation is not based on feelings. It's based on facts. Mm -hmm. You have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith and trust in Him. The word belief implies a lot more than just knowledge, right? Correct. The Bible tells us that demons believe mm -hmm. and tremble, but they don't, they're not saved. They're a complete antichrist. They're mm -hmm. complete in opposition to Christ. But they believe. Mm -hmm. They know the Scripture better than we do. Mm -hmm. They know it by heart. The Satan, what he do? He... He quoted Scripture to the Lord Jesus Christ when he tempted him. Mm -hmm. And Christ quoted Scripture right back. Mm -hmm. The lesson writer makes a statement in this lesson I found kind of interesting. He said there are two sources of spiritual guidance. One comes from God, one comes from Satan. Mm -hmm. What we as Christians have to do is we have to have a foundation in the Word that allows us to discern the difference. Mm -hmm. And part of that we're going to see here together, or we're going to read about here together this morning. So, Brendan, would you read verse 23 through 24, please? And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit whom he hath given us. Now, John is saying here that we don't have to think about our salvation if we've put our faith and trust in Christ, that there are two things that are going to come out of this. First, your salvation is a one-time experience. It occurs at the point of time you put your faith and trust in Christ. When you believed, you believed in your heart, you confessed with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. Baptism is something we follow because Christ instructed us to as obedience. Baptism does not save us. We're in great opposition with many denominations over that. There are many denominations, including the Catholic Church, uh, the Christian Church, the Church of Christ, and other denominations that believe that baptism, the act of baptism, actually completes your salvation. Baptism for us is a biblical bad baptism. You think Christ needed to be baptized, Brenda? Oh, no. Why did he do it? As an example for us. He did. Um, and we are to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We Baptists sometimes don't place 
enough emphasis on it. I think it was two years after I was saved before I was ever baptized. It mm -hmm. needs to be something that's done quickly, like the Philippian jailer's family, but it does not save you. Even there, um, the Philippian jailer said, what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. And Paul preached the gospel to them. Then they received Christ. Then they were baptized. Mm -hmm. That is the proper order of things. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave his commandment. This believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is the same as love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind, right? Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing because Jesus is God. Right. In order to believe on him, you must believe that he came in the flesh. He's going to address this here in a minute. What the Gnostics were teaching is that you didn't need to believe he came in the flesh. Mm -hmm that Christ could never have occupied a body of a human being, a sinful human being, because God couldn't do that. God was perfect and holy. <laughs> well, we'll see what John says about that, Brenda, in the next couple of three verses. Read for us uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 4, please. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. By this know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, of which ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, incarnation. We went through the, the basis and the foundation of that word last week. Carne, meaning in Latin, meat or flesh. Carne and porte. I told my story about San Pedro Sula, Honduras. Um, when we say that Christ is incarnate, that really means that Christ is in the, the flesh. flesh. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. He was born a man. He was conceived a man. He died a man. He sits at the right hand throne of God a man. And yet, he is 100% God. What did Paul say? He said he was tempted like as to which we are, mm -hmm. in the same manner as we are, yet, yet remain sinless. without sin. That's what made the Lord Jesus Christ uh, incarnate a perfect sacrifice for our sin. Uh, we will never be able to reach that standard, but yet that standard is before us, is it not? Mm -hmm. Our standard is to be Christ-like. The Apostle Paul says, he commands it, be ye conformed to the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not possible for any one of us to do that. We sin when we take our first breath and forgive to get, forget to give God thanks for it. Um, we sin in everything we do in our attitudes. I sin today. I cussed a little today. You all might be surprised by that. But I had a very good reason to do it. Peter cursed. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that I was had, a big I had every reason to do it. I had every right to do it. <laughs> but it was sinful, was it not? It was. It was sinful. We are sinful men and women, and yet God, when he looks at us because of this belief we put in the Lord Jesus Christ, does not see our sin. He sees the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The precious Holy Spirit comes to live in us the moment we take Jesus as our Lord and Savior. No man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, does that mean that I'm free to do anything I want? No, it does not. Sounds to me like it does. Well, but you're reading it wrong then or something. You let the Holy Spirit lead you and see if that's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, the Apostle Paul said, should we sin that grace could abound? What was his response to that? God forbid. Rhetorical question. God, God forbid. forbid. We are not free to sin. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin and points to righteousness in Jesus Christ. He convicted me of what I did today. And I'm speaking of it and confessing it right now. We are always, if the Holy Spirit lives in us, under His conviction. He is always pointing us to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be conformed to the image of Christ, no matter how poor job we do of it. Mm -hmm. That is our standard, is it not? Yes. That is our standard. And what does he say? Hereby know ye 
the Spirit of God, meaning that we should be able to try the spirits, test the spirits, correct? Mm -hmm. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Mm -hmm. And every spirit that confesses he didn't is of who? The Antichrist. Satan. It's yeah. of Satan. It's mm -hmm. of the devil. So he is saying that all of this Gnostic belief, these Greek Christians running around telling other Christians that Christ could not come in the flesh, they're preaching the word of Satan, mm -hmm. not the word of God. Very, very important point. Now we're going to look at some scriptures that the Apostle Paul wrote that I know were circulating around at this time. Um, and you're going to see how he responds uh, concerning false teaching, false preaching. If you would turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Brenda, and read verse 3 and 4, and then our other two readings are going to come in the next book, the book of Galatians. Okay. 2 second. Corinthians 11, 3 through 4, and then I want you to drop down and read verse 13 through 16. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his craftiness, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if we receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And now, what then, do you think that bear with him means? That means they have nothing to do with him. That's what it means. Now, it looks different than that mm -hmm. in our English. But what it means is you shouldn't have anything to do with that. Okay. Period. Reject it. Now go and read 13 through 16. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool. If so, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. Now, the Apostle Paul, what he's doing there is he's saying, I am an apostle. I was appointed apostle, not mm -hmm. by any man, by Christ himself. There are people at this time, this is A.D., oh, it's a, before A.D. 65 for sure, as he's writing this letter back to the Corinthian church, there are people preaching false doctrine. There are people preaching heresy. And he says they are of the devil. Mm -hmm. And that you wouldn't be and shouldn't be surprised because even the devil can make himself appear as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. And we have whole religions today based on uh, a semblance of what is in the Word that might be um, seen as something that's right, but is completely false. Completely false. Of the devil. Mm -hmm. And then Galatians chapter 1. It's the next book over from 2 Corinthians. Galatians chapter 1. I want you to read verses 6 through 10. I know you knew that, but you're going the wrong direction. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. Pretty strong language, is it not? Yes. Someone preaching another Jesus, another gospel, something that's not of the Scriptures, something that's not orthodox, something that's not true, that's heresy, that's false, um, have nothing to do with them. The Apostle Paul says, emulate me. What I preach to you is the truth. Stay with that. Don't let anyone influence you with any other gospel. And then if you would go down, Brenda, to Galatians chapter 3 and verse, verses 1 through 5. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been openly set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Holy Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? 
Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. What has happened here in the Galatians, the book of Galatians, in this letter, is you had people coming into that church preaching that salvation was through works. The Apostle Paul has preached over and over that salvation is through faith and faith alone. And he actually goes so far as to say in this book that no man is justified by the works of the flesh. Yet we have whole denominations today that are in complete opposition to that teaching. Now, we do know that faith works come from faith that you have put in Christ because the Holy Spirit's going to guide you, move you, direct you, right? Mm -hmm. To do those things that are right in God's sight. We had a lesson here not too long ago out of 2 Corinthians and out of 1 Corinthians about hay, stubble, and wood and gold, silver, and precious stone. Those are works that we do at the direction of the Holy Spirit. It has nothing to do with our salvation, but it has everything to do with our reward in the afterlife. When we get to heaven, the Apostle Paul says, Do you not know that you shall rule over kings and kingdoms? When the Corinthians were taking one another to court, can you not make... Can you not uh, decide these things among yourselves? Do you not know that you will one day be rulers of kings and kingdoms? Um, the age-old theological problem of is faith enough or do works are works required? And what does he say to the Galatians in the first part? Read that first verse again. Oh, foolish Galatians. And then the and next. Th who has bewitched you? Yes, who has bewitched you? Who has so easily bewitched you? After I've come there and taught you, I've told you exactly what the truth is. Along comes some teacher that convinces you, and mankind is always looking for a recipe, a formula, a protocol, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing by uh, true belief, but have a protocol of some kind set up. And they love to be told what to do and how to do it. And there's a recipe, da, da, da. And there's a point system here, like a test. And the Apostle Paul says, our salvation is not a works, but it's a faith. How does he say that in the book of Ephesians? He sa What's he say? Saved by grace, right? Mm -hmm. Not, not a, a works, works, lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. This is the foundation of our faith, that our salvation is not in us. Uh, it's not in our works. It's 100% in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And as he tells the Colossians, how can I convince you that you are complete in Christ Jesus? You've got all of this extraneous stuff coming in. Keep this holiday and that holiday and this feast and that feast and follow after. None of that is necessary. Your salvation is in Christ and Christ alone. Mm -hmm. And that is the foundation of what the Apostle John um, is trying to say, our victory is in Jesus. What's the last part of that scripture you read in 1 John? Greater is he that is in you than he that, that is, is in, in the world. world. Who is in the world? Who is the prince of the power of the air of this world? Satan. Satan is. But greater is he who is in us. And um, a great foundational truth, a great uh, encouragement and a message of assurance. And our lesson writer says, do you struggle with doubt? I think there's some hymns like that, isn't there, Brenda, that has that concept in them? Mm -hmm. um, are you weak and heavy laden? Right? Yeah, that's okay. enough. Enough? Okay. Um, do you believe in Christ as a source of your salvation, or do you believe in yourself? Well, you better believe in Christ. because your Is your salvation dependent on what you do? I hope not. Well, better not be. Well, I'm, it isn't, obviously. It better not be. Yeah. Uh, by faith are you saved, through mm -hmm. grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. And yet there are whole denominations that believe that you can lose your salvation, but it's not from being mean to your spouse or kicking the dog or, or it's adultery or some great sin. All sin is sin, right? Correct. The least sin that you could possibly think of. Getting up and forgiving to give thanks to God that you're awake, that you're alive is a sin. And that would send you to hell just as easily as committing adultery. Um, all sin separates you from God unless the blood of Jesus blinds him to that sin. Mm -hmm. So our salvation is not based on us. 
If we do fall into sin, then the Holy Spirit is to convict us of sin and point us to righteousness in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I said, you're either going to be conformed to the image of Christ, you're either going to listen to the Holy Spirit, He's very patient, sometimes He takes years, or you're going to get to meet Ananias and Sapphira much faster than you thought possible. Your life is not your own, remember? Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul says you are not your own, you're purchased with a precious price. That's something I don't think I was taught very well when I was a younger Christian. No. Uh, through primaries and juniors and intermediates. I was getting some good Old Testament. I was learning about the mighty men of valor and King David and, and Joshua and Caleb. But I wasn't learning spiritual truth. And part of that spiritual truth is when I took Christ as my Lord and Savior, I ceased to own this man. Mm -hmm. I no longer own him. The Lord Jesus Christ owns him. Correct. And he's going to have his way with you. You're going to be conformed to the image of Christ one way or the other. That is just a hard, cold fact of the Scriptures. Now, how do we do a better job of being the Christian we want to be? What he says is we're to love one another and father, follow Christ's commandments. And he says there are lots of ways that we can do that. We can do it through Bible study. We can do it through church attendance, Scripture, memory. Uh, he mentioned something here I don't like, fasting. I don't like that. I don't think that's right. Uh, <laughs> each of these disciplines will help us to walk in the route and the way and the narrow path that the Lord Jesus Christ has requested of us, required of us. Um, you can't just come over here and take the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and say, well, I got my fire insurance now. I'm not going to go to hell and then take off and do as you please. The Holy Spirit's not going to allow that. Mm -hmm. If you are allowed to do that, what does John say? then doubt your salvation mm -hmm. because you're not abiding in Him. And if you don't abide in Him, doubt it. Mm -hmm. If you do abide in Him, you have the assurance of His salvation. And then the other thing he says, so many people now in this COVID outbreak and all the difficult times that we have are forsaking the assembling of themselves together. They're forsaking fellowship with other Christians. Mm -hmm. How do you exercise love your fellow man better than you love yourself or as you love yourself is what Christ said and the Apostle Paul said better than yourself esteem others higher than oneself mm -hmm. um, how are you going to do that if you don't fellowship with them it's extremely difficult and the longer you stay away the easier it is to stay away to get um, I think one th one thing that happens and uh, you know I'm I'm not the, really the right one to ask, you know, to talk about this because we never did stop going to church. We never did. We had two Even weeks off. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. Well, that's what it was two supposed weeks. to be, you know, two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and so Funny we, pit. Two yes, weeks. Yes, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Okay. But um, what happens is you, you become inwardly turned. Uh, I mean, how can you fellowship and how can you care about your fellow man you never How see can them. you, if you never see them, you don't know what's going on in their lives. Yeah. You know, if if somebody has come down with COVID, but you you're not in you're not in the loop. How do you know that? And how are you going to pray for them? In our so, cell group on Sunday night, which is res relatively small, dozen people, eight to a dozen people, mm -hmm. we sit down and make a big long list of prayer requests, and we spend an hour, an hour and a half praying for them. If you're not fellowshipping with other believers, or you're not assembling yourselves together, how are you going to do that? It's very, very difficult. Most people don't have the self-discipline to do it. No. It's pretty hard to take a big, long list and pray for it by yourself. But you know, it's easy when you pray together, isn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, yeah. You assign... Well, uh, another reason that we gather together is because... Jesus says, where two or more yep. are gathered in my name, and besides I that, will be there. We have Southern you. Baptist Fellowship of Meat and Eat. Yes, that's right. That's, that's right. worth it all. Well, that's right the there. most important thing. The best Southern food yes. a man could ever ask for. Mm -hmm. And dessert. And dessert. Well, we got some good cooks in our group. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Glad it's not me cooking. We are too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe that's going to complete our lesson. Um, Understand that the Apostle John is giving these new Christians an assurance of their salvation 
while these Greek Christians, the Gnostic on the, Gnostics on the side, are saying you're worthless, you're no good, you're a fleshly man, God can't have anything to do with the fleshly man, so you take the Lord Jesus as your Christ and then you just live any way you want to because you can't do anything about it anyway. Yeah. And the Apostle John is turning that on its head, is he not? Mm -hmm. You can have assurance because of what comes out of you. You believed at one time, and what comes out of you is you keep his commandments and you love your fellow man. Mm -hmm. When those things are coming out of you, the it is the fulfillment of Christ's Scripture, His very words, by, your, by their fruits you shall know them. Mm -hmm. So if this could be any encouragement for you all listening to this today, um, we'd like to see you back in church. We'd like to fellowship with you. We'd like to uh, have an opportunity to pray for you and with you. Um, the Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrews strictly says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Um, a root of bitterness can set into your life if you disregard that request from the Apostle Paul. I pray that doesn't happen for you. I pray that, um, you know, I don't know that we've had one case of COVID as a result of our church. You're, you're not setting that close to people. We've got it spread out. We have alcohol. It's a big, huge room with lots of airflow. Put on your hands. Yeah, it's not drinking alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> We're Southern Baptists. We don't drink. It's uh, hand, hand alcohol. Hand sanitizer. And alcohol is not absorbed through your skin, so you don't have to worry about it. Even if it is ethanol, it's not absorbed through your skin. Otherwise, you'd taste alcohol every time you put it on your hands. Remember that. Safe and effective. Well, thank you all for attending. And I uh, hope this scripture is, these scriptures have been inspiring to you, give you assurance of your salvation. Salvation is not dependent on you. It's not dependent on what you do. Not really even dependent on how you feel. Your feelings will lead you astray. Your heart can condemn you. Now, Satan is doing the condemning because he is the author of condemnation. You'll remember that the Apostle Paul wrote that Satan is the author of confusion. And that's what he's doing in our world today. Don't be part of it. Reject it. Try the spirits. Test the spirits. Jesus Christ came in the flesh, incarnate, 100% man, and 100% God. See you next week.